Hello and welcome to the final video in the A-Level Biology series. In this video we will discuss more about genetic engineering. In this video we will cover practical aspects and applications of genetic engineering. Polymerase chain reaction and gel electrophoresis. Applications of genetic engineering in medicine and applications of genetic engineering in agriculture. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, is an in vitro, out of the cell technique used to make many copies of a specific sequence of DNA. PCR is important for the use in research such as medical cloning, paternity testing and diagnostics in forensics. Complementary primers, which are specifically designed oligonucleotides, are used for specific target DNA sequences. The primers anneal to the start, which is the forward primer, and end, the reverse primer, of a specific DNA sequence during PCR. A mixture of nucleotides and a thermostable DNA polymerase is added into the reaction to extend the DNA from the primers to produce many copies of the target DNA. So what do you need for PCR? DNA, which you can extract from the cell, primers, a reverse and a forward primer, a thermocycler, which is an instrument used for heating and cooling during the reaction, a heat tolerant DNA polymerase, this is commonly TAC polymerase from Firmus aquaticus, the bacteria. You will also need a supply of nucleotides in order to extend your DNA. All components are mixed in labelled tubes and added to PCR tubes. The PCR tubes are then loaded into the thermal cycler. First, the mixture is heated to 92 to 98 degrees to denature the DNA into two separate strands a sense or coding strand and antisense or non-coding strand. Second, the mixture is cooled to 50 to 60 degrees to allow the primers to anneal to the DNA sequence complementary to the two ends of the DNA fragment to be amplified. The mixture is then heated to 70 degrees and the thermostable polymerase extends the DNA sequences from two primers by adding in complementary nucleotides, forming two DNA strands. This cycle of heating and cooling is repeated 30 to 40 times to produce millions of copies of the DNA fragment. Each cycle creates two to the power of the cycle number copies of DNA. A good way to remember is 1. Denature, 2. Anneal, 3. Extend, and 4. Repeat. After this, you can run the PCR products through gel electrophoresis to analyse your DNA fragments. Gel electrophoresis is a technique used to separate DNA based on their size and charge. This is a useful technique to use when you want to check whether your recombinant plasmid has the correct gene or your PCR cycles have been successful. You can also determine how many DNA fragments are in your sample. You must know the size of your DNA fragment for this. DNA size can be measured in base pairs, BP, or kilo base pairs, which is a thousand base pairs, KB. DNA is a negatively charged molecule due to the phosphate group in the sugar phosphate backbone. DNA is stained with a DNA binding dye and is added into specialised gel which has small pores in which DNA will move through. An electrical field of approximately 80 to 120 volts is applied to separate the fragments of DNA within the sample. As DNA is negatively charged, DNA will move towards the positive electrode. DNA which has moved through the gel will appear as lines referred to as bands. A DNA ladder is also loaded into the gel. This is a mixture of known DNA sizes which you can then compare with the bands to determine the size of the DNA fragments. The gel is made from heating agarose, a polysaccharide, in buffer solution. The mixture is then cooled to form the gel. 
During the cooling, a DNA binding dye is added to the mixture such as iphidium bromide or cyber green. These will bind to the DNA and fluoresce under UV light. The gel is poured while still warm into a gel mould. A comb is applied at the top of the gel which will create the wells for DNA loading. Once the gel is set, place the gel into a gel box which contains the positive and negative electrodes connected to a power supply. Place the end of the gels with the wells closest to the negative electrode. Pour in a salt containing buffer into the gel box, barely covering the gel. This conducts the current. Now load the DNA ladder and the DNA samples you wish to visualise. Turn on the power and let the gel run for 20 to 30 minutes depending on the size of your DNA. Remember smaller fragments will move through the gel faster than larger fragments so make sure the gel does not run for too long or the samples can run off the gel completely. After the gel has been run you can examine it under UV light. The well defined lines are called bands. You can compare them with the DNA ruler to determine their size. This is an example of a gel under the UV light. At the top of this gel, the wells are labelled 1 to 12. These can also be referred to as lanes. Lanes 1 and 12 contain the DNA ladder. Lanes 2 to 8 contain the DNA samples. So now we have covered the techniques in analysing DNA, we can look at some of the applications of genetic engineering in medicine and agriculture. Recombinant DNA can be used to make proteins. Some non-genetic and genetic diseases can be caused by a lacking of a functional protein, so being able to produce functional proteins to be used in treatments is effective in treating these diseases. Diabetes is a condition caused by the dysregulation of blood sugar levels, resulting in high blood sugar levels, which is dangerous. Diabetes occurs when the patient either cannot produce insulin or cannot produce enough insulin to regulate blood glucose. Insulin is a protein hormone produced in the pancreas. It helps with the storage of glucose in the liver, fats and muscles, reducing the level of sugar in blood and increasing energy stores. Diabetes can be treated by insulin injections to help regulate blood sugar levels. Therefore, being able to produce insulin efficiently is effective in treating this condition. Genetic engineering plays a key role in this. Producing insulin for treating diabetes. The gene for insulin is isolated from a human cell and inserted into a plasmid. Remember restriction and ligation from the last video. Use the recombinant plasmid to transform bacteria such as E. coli or yeast cells. Grow the cells in culture using fermentation to build a large stock of the copies of the insulin carrying plasmid. The gene will be expressed, allowing insulin to be produced in the cells. Then extract the DNA and isolate and purify the insulin from the cells. The advantages of this process. The insulin produced is identical to human insulin. The supply is readily available and reliable. There are less ethical or moral concerns with this method and it is not using human embryos or animals less chance of rejection and cheap to produce. Another important use for genetic engineering which is being widely researched is gene therapy. Gene therapy uses various mechanisms to deliver genetic material to alter a patient's DNA to treat or cure disease. This is being able to replace a faulty gene, inactivate a faulty gene or insert a new gene. As discussed in the last video, viral vectors are the most used delivery systems in gene therapy. Somatic gene therapy is short-lived and patient-specific, meaning that the treatment does not affect the gametes, the changes are not passed down into the offspring. Gene therapy in germ cells is illegal. There are two methods of gene therapy. One is in vivo. A new gene within the viral vector is inserted into cells within the body. 
This mainly uses adenoviruses or adeno-associated viruses to infect non-dividing cells with the new gene. This is commonly used to treat inherited retinal eye diseases. Ex vivo. A new gene within the viral vector is inserted into cells outside of the body in the lab before returning the cells to the patient. This occurs by infecting dividing cells such as stem cells and T cells with lentiviral or retroviral vectors to incorporate a new gene into the cell's genome. For example, in treating severe combined immunodeficiency caused by a mutation in the ADA gene, stem cells are infected with a copy of the functional ADA gene and return to the patient. Genetic engineering is a promising technique in agriculture. With populations rising, climate change and space to grow food reducing, scientists need to find innovative ways to produce more products with less space and resources. Genetic engineering can confer adaptive traits to crops to allow them to better survive a changing environment, produce higher yields and last longer on the shelf. GMOs are genetically modified organisms which have had their DNA altered to add in desirable traits. Here is a summary of the pros and cons of genetic engineering in plants and animals. Pros in plants. This can confer disease resistance, pest resistance, herbicide resistance, drought resistance, increased nutrition and yield, increased shelf life, production of proteins for medicine. Some cons are pathogens and pests can then involve resistance. This may lead to the evolution of super weeds, which are weeds that are resistant to herbicides. There are some restrictions on growing GM crops in certain countries. Farmers will need to continuously buy GM seeds. The pros for genetic engineering in animals are disease resistance, grow larger, the production of growth hormones, production of proteins for medicine, and some cons. This can produce harmful side effects in animals. Ethical issues around inserting human genes. Animals can die in the production of GM. And again, restrictions in certain countries of cultivation and consumption of GMOs. This concludes today's video of the final part of genetic engineering and the end of the A-level biology series. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your revision.